First of all, thank you, Dr. Leon Sher Green, to do this interview with us. Um, the first question we want to ask you is about um, your job. Could you just tell us a little bit about how long you've been at the school and what are your main duties and responsibilities as director of the high school? I've been here at Windermere Prep for seven years now. And during that seven years, five of those years were spent as a high school English teacher. I was the honors teacher as well as the IB English teacher when we did literature and when we switched over to language and literature. So that's my capacity there. And then now, I've been the high school director for two years and really enjoyed every aspect of it. I never thought that I really wanted to be an administrator, but now that I've taken on the role and all the challenges and all of the successes that come with it, I've really enjoyed the transition to the, to the offices. <laughs> over the next year or two, will there be any significant course or curriculum changes that high schoolers now or incoming high schoolers should probably be a bit prepared for? Um, well, in terms of just being a high school student in general, just there are different things that, that students should be working on. That's you know, the time management skills as well as just trying to find ways to get involved. But in terms of changes with curriculum, something that we are tentatively offering for next year is Mandarin. So we're going to offer that to the rising ninth graders and to the rising juniors who are already native Mandarin speakers. So we have that coming along and then one of the other changes that we're taking out of the curriculum is film. So we're taking, we're still offering advanced film, but we won't be offering the IB film as the year one students here on campus. There will be some online offerings for students who do want to pursue that, but those are two of the major um, changes that we also, that we have right now. Um, I would also say that with our dance classes, we're broadening some of the curriculum offerings there as well. With the, with the arrival of Mrs. Hadley, she's going to be able to take our dance program in a different direction. And then we also have more fine arts um, theater classes that we're going to be offering next year as well. In terms of WPS being an IB school, what would you say are the advantages and the disadvantages of um, doing the IB program? The advantages of doing the IB program are immense. Normally when students finish, they go through the whole program, and I'm talking about the full diploma program mm -hmm. at this point, so the three higher levels and the three standard levels plus theory of knowledge and their extended essay. When they leave from WPS and go off to their colleges and universities, they find that they are overly prepared for the challenges that are going to happen then. Because what happens during that, that those two years Yes, you're learning all about the content from your science classes, your English classes, and even your dance classes if you choose to do that. But more so, you're learning about yourself, and you're learning all of those elements of time management, perseverance, things that you really can't learn in, in some of the your traditional classrooms that are out there in the rest of the world. So the IB program really teaches the students to develop grit to develop a strength that's going to be, you know, internal for them that they'll be able to use throughout the rest of their lives. And then in addition to that, whenever they do do, do or whenever they are successful in the program, then they're able to use some of those credits for college credits. So there have been students who have graduated who start off as second year, second semester sophomores. So that makes a huge difference in terms of, you know, where they start their college careers. In terms of disadvantages, there are some sacrifices that students will have to make if they really feel like they have to develop or to delve all the way into the academic side of it. We've had plenty of students who have been full diploma students who have also been three sport athletes. We had, you had two sport athletes, SGA presidents, everything. So you still have a, a way to give back to the school as an IB student, but you know there are some things that you might have to sacrifice. So you know, it's all about checks and balances, what you're willing to give up, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, but overall, any student can really be a part of the IB program. Other than the grit and the drive that you mentioned, what would you say um, makes the ideal student? I would say confidence is, is a big part of the process as well. And not saying that you have to come in with confidence, but developing it and finding different ways to find joy in the successes that you make and not beat yourself up if you don't do so well on something. So I think that confidence is key. Having a good attitude, and uh, you know, that we've talked about mindset before and having the right mindset, a growth mindset, 
helps so much for students because they understand that just because I didn't do well in this assignment, it doesn't make me a failure. It just means that I have more to learn. And that willingness to learn is something that's much more important than just you know, having a finite definition of oneself, saying that this is all I can do. So confidence, a growth mindset, and just that, you know, the grit and the perseverance that I talked about earlier. What advice would you give to um, incoming students from middle school to better prepare themselves for the high school experience? I would say read. That's a big part of just the entire high school. Read, find things that you enjoy reading. Don't just read a book just because somebody said you should read this book, but finding a joy of reading will make a huge difference as well as just writing ideas down. Yeah, you know, that's a really good way because whenever you get to high school, it doesn't matter what class you're in, you're going to have to do some kind of writing, and especially a lot of reflective writing. So why, if you wrote this essay, why did you write it that way? If you have to do this, you know, this math problems, why did you solve it this way? So really focusing on, you know, the reading side of it and then the writing side of it will be things that will really help them. And then learning some more time management techniques would be helpful as well. Do you have any advice for students that are transferring into WPS from other schools? I would say, you know, try to come on campus during the summer and get a feel for what the campus is all about. You know, meet with me, meet with the counselors, meet with Mr. Pezicek, just so you can get a feel for, you know, what we're, what our expectations are here. And then if you're able to reach out to some of the teachers early and find out what was already covered and then, you know, what they can expect from their future classes, that would be very helpful for them. In terms of senioritis, <laughs> what would you say are some cures for that um, disorder that's spreading <laughs> across the high school population? <laughs> I will say that senioritis happens not only to the seniors, it happens to us adults <laughs> as well. I've dealt with it, you know, whenever I was in the classroom as well because we all see that the end is near, but one of the things that seniors have to concentrate on is ending well. Always focus on the end in mind and then the way that they end is going to be the way that they begin their college career. So really finding a way, understanding that life doesn't end, life won't ever come to that senioritis moment. So it's all about finding a challenge in the moment and taking things one day at a time, not letting everything overwhelm them, but instead just really enjoying every single moment and realizing that the time that they spend here on campus every day will be the last bit of time that they'll get to spend with their friends, you know, in this in this type of environment. So really enjoying that that side of it, I would say. That's a one cure. <laughs> it is. What would you say was um, the biggest shock about college, at least for you, um, and how would you suggest preparing for it? I would say the biggest shock for me about college was just the freedom, you know, to do whatever I wanted to do whenever I wanted to do it. I didn't sleep very much. <laughs> I wish I would have slept more. Um, but you know, I felt like I wanted to be involved more. You know, whenever I got to college, so one of the things that I wish I would have prepared for was that side of it in high school. Because when I got to college, I found myself still a little bit introverted, mm -hmm. and I would I know that if I would have done different things in high school, been more of that extrovert, find a way to get involved with all these different clubs, and I know that I would have been able to you know, develop those social skills, those people skills earlier on instead of waiting until college to do it. Because I think I could have done even more in college if I would have felt comfortable with who I was whenever I got there in the first place. Okay. Um, speaking of sleep, so you have uh, three choices, sleep, grades, and social life, and you can only pick two. Which two would you pick and why? Grades and social life. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, I don't sleep enough. Um, but you know, with the grades, especially as a high school student, it's going to propel you into your future. Um, it, but then the social life of it, you can't just be an academician and and expect that to be the only thing that's going to get you into a college or university of your choice. A lot of colleges that are those top tier colleges right now they'll look at GPAs across the board and they'll see, okay, all these kids look the same. So I would choose good grades and a good social life instead of the sleep option because 
You know, you can always sleep. You can always <laughs> find time for sleep. You can't ever catch up on sleep, and I understand that, you know, very much. But whenever I look at high school and I looked at, you know, what I could have done more of, I wish I would have spent more time studying. I was a good student, but I wish I would have spent more time studying. And I wish I would have spent more time developing those, those, those social skills, that social life. Um, but, and I think it's really important to do both of those because when colleges and universities look at your college applications, they're going to see the, the same GPA. They're going to see, especially those top tier colleges and universities, everyone's going to have the great GPA. There are going to be a lot of valedictorians who are applying, but what makes a person different? It's those social experiences that they have. So really developing those a lot more is really important. I love sleep, and now I understand the importance of it even more so, and I do encourage the students to sleep, but I also understand that you know, those other two pieces are very important. Going back to your job, what would you say is the most fulfilling and challenging aspect of it? I think the most fulfilling part of it is still connecting with students, even though I'm not in the classroom anymore, you know, and that was really hard for me to separate myself from the everyday instruction. Um, having a chance to work with students to look at, you know, ways that I can help them individually. If I see that they're struggling in this one class, what can I do? How can I be a resource for you, even if it's a math class? I'm not a math person, <laughs> but I will find resources to help them along the way. And then at the, on the other side of it, also helping the, the teachers. So if the teachers need help with different strategies to make their students successful, then I can, I can research those for them, or I can just be a ready resource to say, this is something you can try, I can model it for you, and you know, then follow up with them and see how I can you know, be the best, um, best resource for them. So that's been really a really great experience. And then interacting with parents, you know, that's been a, a really cool part of the job too because when I was in the classroom, I just had my own students' mm -hmm. parents to work with, but now I have the entire school. And it, being able to reach out and make a phone call saying, hey, your child, I heard they did something really cool today at school, you know, and having that opportunity or send an email home of, of positive encouragement, that's something that I really enjoy because a lot of times when parents see the phone call from the school, they think something bad happened, you know, so being, <laughs> able, to be, <laughs> so being able to, you know, reach out and say these are the good things that your child is doing, that's been a really, really fun part of the job. What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you at WPF? Let's see, I helped with a senior prank one year, <laughs> which involved us coming really late at night and saran wrapping a bunch of teachers stuff together <laughs> and putting chairs on top of the awnings up there and then whenever everyone came in school that morning the seniors were on top of the of, of the, <laughs> the building holding class. That was fun. <laughs> that, that was definitely a good time. But I mean we English classes we had a lot of good times, you know, in there. I told the students all the time, I never felt like I was teaching. I always felt like I got to play. You know, <laughs> to come to class. So it was, it was great just, you know, going through that experience. And um, to end this interview, we would like to ask if there's anything else you'd like to share with Reach a Student and all the students we um, I would say that every student in our high school is completely capable of achieving more than they think that they can. So, you know, I come back to that whole confidence thing. Um, when students really believe in themselves and when they have teachers who are here to support them, to tell them that they can do it, then they really can, you know, and we're willing to do whatever it takes in order to help students be successful. So that's who we are here at WPS. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Dr. You're welcome. Lewis.